coming to you straight from the base of Castileport, um, which Camps Bay is actually directly behind me, down in Cape Town. And I'm just getting started. I thought I'm gonna flip some of this sort of trash before I start get going, make my way up the mountain a little bit. Um, I was here a little while ago with Oliver and we got some nice stuff further up the mountain, but like I said, I'm gonna work through a bit of this trash first. There you go. <laughs> That didn't take long. Oh, we got a double flip. We have an olive snake and we have the ever present common slug eater, which um, is unfortunately just the cream of the trash out here in the Cape. Um, but this guy's quite a decent size one. Um, lucky for him because the little olive snake over here, they have a sort of a tendency to eat other snakes. So. Luckily, he's quite small, otherwise that could be a bit of a disastrous situation. But yeah, nice. This is literally the first stuff that I flipped. I sort of just formed a little intro and double flipped two snakes in pristine habitat on the base of Table Mountain, the mountain, and I get it under pieces of trash. That seems like just how Western Cape Hoping goes. But I'm going to grab a quick voucher of each one of these guys and just let them go. This is a close look at this olive snake. You can see it's got quite a nice dark head, which is a little bit darker from the body. Um, I'm just gonna release him back into this trash pile. Um, I was trying to get a clip of the slug eater, but I wasn't actually filming before he went away. But yeah, this is just a little one, um, but anyone who's been watching the videos for a little while <clears throat> would know they're, they're pretty common. So I can just put him right back where he was, put the rest of this trash back. Um, I suppose even with, you know, dealing with trash piles like this, it's always important to sort of put the trash back and you can come revisit it uh, at a later stage. But cool, we're going to carry on going. So I just started moving a couple of rocks here in the shade. Um, let me see if I can get a match here. And we have slug unit number two for the day. It's quite a decent sized one. Um, if you'll calm down to a mild panic before he musks all over me. Let me see, they've got that really nice yellow belly with the dark edgings on there. Um, these snakes are probably between mole snakes and slug eaters are probably the most common snake in, in the western, well, in, in the greater Cape Town area, particularly in shady spots like this, which are just treated as dump zones. But yeah, not going to hop on about him. I don't have too much battery on my phone left. I forgot to charge it before coming out, but I'm just going to let this guy go and we're going to try and make our way up the mountain a little bit and see if we can find some interesting stuff. Let's bring this little sluggy to back and just cover up his little rocks and he should be good to go to fulfill his slug eating duties elsewhere. So I just flipped another common slug eater. Um, as common as these guys are, they're actually quite an interesting species. I mean, as the name suggests, they only feed on slugs and snails, so quite an adaptive species um, feeding on such a niche prey item. But yeah, I'm gonna let this guy go um, if you all stop tweaking out and hopefully we can turn something else up. Fortunately for the time being, I'm on the Jeep track, but you can see it's not really a blah, bad place to be hoping, Archer. Gotcha. Just so we can find some more things that weren't slug eaters. That'd be great. So right on the edge of the trail here, you can see he's not even worried about me. Um, these guys are just so habituated to people running and walking along the path here. This is Cordalis niger, it's the black girdled lizard. I'm not gonna catch him, he's sort of hanging out basking by his crack. And like I was saying, right on the edge of the path here. So you can carry on and maybe we'll see some big ones. I just flipped a little rock here and we've got one, two, three, four, five hatched eggs. I'm not too sure what they would be here. Um, I would think maybe something small like a spotted harlequin snake, like we would have seen in the other videos. That would probably be the only likely explanation, but these eggs are pretty old. There's no one home, so we're going to put the rock back and try to find some other herbs. So 
while herping, I actually find a lot of these. Um, this is actually a geocache box. Um, I see if there's anything cool inside it. But it's it's basically like a coordinate lead game that people go out and sort of hide little packages and they generally have like a little yeah. <laughs> a little uh, package in here and there's usually little trinkets and stuff so you find something fill in the logbook and then sort of put it back but yeah I find quite a lot of these while hoping but it always amazes me like how easy some of them are but I'm just gonna put I was actually trying to flip that rock I'm just gonna put it back hide it a little bit um, and then someone else can come find it So there's a pretty cool sighting. There was an adult and a tiny baby just out basking here, catching the last minutes of the afternoon sun before it sort of casts over here. If you can check, there's the little one just wedged in the crack there. Not going to bother them, just going to carry on. A bit early, and I'm just walked up here to Castilport. Um, can't see much there. There's Camps Bay all the way there. There's Lion's Head. My house is over there somewhere. And there's Table Mountain in Castilport. Found four snakes already, so quick, 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 but nothing too fantastic. <clears throat> Good morning. Well, it's getting well into the afternoon. Just out here in a bit of Afro-Montane forest at the base of the mountain, which you can't see, but the top of well, Table Mountain is over there. We're just going to be walking through these montane forests, trying to see if we can't turn up any short-legged seps, which generally sit in these little patches of sunlight here um, along these sort of trails short-legged seps maybe some olive snakes herald snakes brown water snakes also really common here and yeah we're just gonna see what we're gonna get after just have a nice chill day in the base of the forest here Well, that's an unexpected find for the area. Here's a little uh, angular tortoise um, who really shouldn't be here. Um, someone's obviously dumped him because they don't occur this close to the city. Someone's obviously just dumped him in this park or had him as a pet or something, but <clears throat> nothing I can do about that. And just gonna put him back in his little grassy patch and he's gonna carry on doing his tortoise things. So I've just been walking the edge of this little forest trail um, and I've been hearing all these lizards running into the sort of undergrowth and I knew what they were but I wasn't able to catch any but I just got two right now. These are tetradactylus seps or the short-legged seps. They've got these enormous tails. Fortunately this one's got a partially regrown tail or in the beginning cells of beginning stages of regrowing. Um, but yeah, these guys are pretty cool. They're really tiny um, and really wriggly. Difficult to get hands on, but they do get quite a bit bigger than this. So hopefully can turn up a couple of bigger ones. And I'll, I'll obviously post a still image towards the end of the video just to give you a better idea what they look like because these guys are really small and the phone really doesn't do them any justice. But yeah, pretty cool. Here's just a little video clip of the short-legged seps. Um, one of the ones with the nice tails, I just let the other one go. Um, it's starting to move a bit. I just thought I'd show you how they sort of wriggle through the grass, well, the sand and the leaf litter. And yeah, you don't see a lot of these guys um, being found or posted about or spoken about, but they're actually really interesting little lizards. Um, one of my favorite genuses, um, that being Tetradactylus, uh, these guys have obviously four really small limbs, hence the name, but many of the other species have um, very, very reduced limbs, some lacking uh, four limbs altogether, and some of them just have incredibly long tails. I mean, like I said, you can see how small this animal is just in relation to my hand here, whereas some of them can attain sort of just under 50 centimeters, some of the other species. But like I said, this is still a young one, um, hopefully you'll see some others, but for now, this guy has done his work and he can get on his way and we can go find something else. So I was just chasing after, or 
walking after a little skink that ran um, just onto this log. And as I pulled this little piece of bark away to find the lizard or the skink, this really good looking herald snake was sitting under it if it decides to focus. There you go. Um, you can see in the sun they're absolutely gorgeous with that sort of black head with that iridescence on it with these nice white speckles all the way through. Um, it's quite a decent size one for the area when they're not too abundant um, down here in the sort of city center or the, the peninsula should I say um, down here in Cape Town. So that's quite a nice find. I know people don't seem to seem to see them very often here so most people will be pretty chuffed with getting this guy. Although I've seen a heck of a lot of these guys up in Kwasili Natal. I'm still going to get a couple of photographs he's spazzing out a bit. And then hopefully I can show you guys what he looks like once he calms down a little bit. But yeah, this is the Herald Snake. So here's just a better look at the typically rather cantankerous Herald Snake. Um, you can see he's quite calm now. He's just flattening that head out just a little bit to give himself a bit of uh, credibility to make himself look like a, a dangerous little adder or something like that. So you got that beautiful dark head or rather the dark temples on either side of the head there. And typically here in the Cape, where I'm in the, on the Cape Peninsula, they have these yellow or very, very pale orange lower lips. In other places in the country, they're bright red, um, bright orange. They can be white, they can be gray. Um, you can see he's got these really nice white speckles all the way down the body. And this is the herald snake. They are typically feeding on small frogs. Uh, they will eat little lizards and, and that sort of thing. Rear fangs, um, but only sort of hunting venom. That's not of much consequence to people at all. And yeah, like I said, they're usually quite sort of grumpy. This guy's really chilled. Um, I actually found him while I was following a, a little seps, a Petrodactylus, uh, running along just a bit of the forest fringe here. And as I went to look at the log that the seps had sort of run under, this guy was just chilling in the crack in the fallen down tree trunk. So I was able just to pry him out very gently, uh, just to get a better look at him. And like I said, Herald Snake, just going to grab a couple of photographs of him and I'm just going to let him go. So I just finished getting some photographs quickly of that little herald snake and I'm just going to put him right back under the little piece of bark that I just saw his body poking out of. And see there he goes. It's actually a really good spot because it catches all this mid-afternoon sun so he can warm up really nicely until he gets ready to go look for some food. Cool. Let's see what else we're going to get after. So have a look at this. This is um, pretty special in terms of chameleons. This is a western dwarf chameleon, it's Bradipodium occidentale. Um, and I've actually found this one in what's known to be sort of a bit of a disjointed relic populations, um, quite close to a bunch of suburbs and probably about 40 or 50 kilometers away from the nearest other known population up on the west coast um, around Bloberg Nature Reserve. I've seen records of these for probably the last 10 years from this reserve but I've never actually been here until today and I came here specifically, little focus, I came here specifically to try to find these guys and um, yeah within sort of half an hour of getting up the hill I managed to find one just sitting half in the shade uh, on this little bush here. So I thought I'd just give you guys a little look of him. Not the most attractive looking chameleon compared to the Cape Dwarf chameleons that we're used to seeing, but um, quite a lot more sort of distinct uh, gula lobes on the side there and the, the sort of dorsal crests on the, sp on the back of the spine there. But you can see they're actually really well adapted for this drier, more arid, Sort of climate which is called Rhinosterfelt. Um, in this tiny little section of the reserve you can see how well he blends in with sort of all the dried sticks and bushes here. But yeah I'm not going to bother this guy too much more. I've got quite a few photographs already, got a record or two for iNaturalist and now yeah, I'm going to see what else I can turn up. 
So, spoiler alert, I didn't land up finding anything else, so thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.